Hi everyone. In this video, I will be discussing about representation of a graph using adjacency list. So just to give a recap, in the previous video, we discussed about how a graph can be represented using adjacency matrix. Uh, we looked at the concept and as well as the advantages and disadvantages of using that representation. And at the end, we had a look at the code. We'll follow the same approach and we'll start with adjacency list. So the definition of adjacency list is it is a collection of lists that is used to represent a finite graph. And the size of the list will be equal to the number of the vertices. And each list will describe the adjacent neighbor of that vertex in the graph. Right? Now let's take an example. So I have taken the same example that I use for adjacent metrics. I have this undirected graph in which, which has five nodes and there are a set of edges. So to create an adjacency list, the first step is to check count the number of nodes. So we have five nodes here, A, B, C, D, E. So we'll create an array of five nodes. So we have this array of five nodes. Now each element of the array will point to a list that will have all the adjacent nodes. So if we take an example of A, the adjacent nodes of A are B and E. So element A of the array will point to a list that will have elements B and E. So it has B and E. Similarly, B has adjacent neighbors as A, E, D, C, and itself as it has a self loop. So B will point to all these elements. Similarly, C is attached to D and B. So it is attached to B and D. Similarly, D has E, B, and C and E has A, B and D. One important point to note here is that these uh, elements of adjacent element need not be ordered. So instead of A, B, D, we can also have D, B, A or B, A, D. It does not matter. So these elements are not ordered in any way. So these are all unordered. Now let's take an example for a directed graph. So for directed graph, it is uh, quite similar. So we just have to check the outgoing edges. So the array size remains the same. So we have five nodes. We have five elements in the array. For A, we'll check the outgoing nodes. So outgoing nodes are B and E. So A will point to B and E. Similarly, element B, the outgoing nodes are, the self node is counted as an outgoing node. So this one, then this, this, and then this. So it has four nodes, B, E, D, C. C has no outgoing nodes, so it is empty. D has outgoing nodes as C and E and E has no outgoing node, so it is empty. So for directed graph, it is also similar. We just have to check the outgoing nodes. So now an important question arises, what if this a weighted graph? Because so far till now, we have only stored the relationship of the adjacent adjacency. We have not stored any weights. So if this is a weighted graph, how will we represent this in this form of adjacency list? So Let's put a weight on these nodes in on these edges. So let's say it has two, it has one, it has three, it has four, it has two, it has one, it has three, and it has two. So how will we represent this? Let me change the pointer color. So if you have to represent this in this form of agency list, so what we will do is so earlier we were only storing the elements that are adjacent to A. So B and E are adjacent to A. So we were storing um, their names. So in now instead of just look at just storing the elements, we are also have to store the weights. So for A to B, the weight is two. So for instead of B, we will store here B comma two. So we can create a pair which have two elements. First we'll have the element uh, node name B and the second one will be the weight, which is an int, so two. So instead of E, so A points to E, the weight is two. So here we'll store E comma two. So all these nodes will have a pair. So let's check another example for D. So D has two outgoing nodes, C and D. So for C, we'll have to store the weight, C comma four. And for E, the weight is one. So here we'll have to store one. So similarly here, we'll also store the same location, same way. So it is quite simple. So instead of just storing the element name, we also have to store the weight. So we can create a pair 
in C++ and then we can store both the information together. Now let's look what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this approach. So what is the first advantage that we have? So the first advantage that we have, it saves a lot of space. So in the early representation, which was adjacency matrix, we saw that even in case of a sparse matrix where the number of edges are quite less as compared to the number of the vertices, we were storing um, the space storage was equal to number of vertices into square of number of vertices. So if we have 100 vertices and only 20 edges in case of a sparse matrix, then the memory consumption was still live, which was 100 into 100. So that was not very space efficient. But in this case, as we can see, for if we take an example of this one, for A, we are only storing memory for the nodes that are adjacent to it, for B and E. We are not storing anything for D and C. Similarly, for B, the nodes which are adjacent, we are only storing memory for those. For C, no node adjacent, we are not storing anything. So this is very space efficient. So the amount of space that is required is is equal to the number of vertices and the number of edges. So V plus C is the space of space utilization of this form of representation using adjacency list. Second is edging, adding an edge is very space efficient. Let's say we have to add an edge from D to B. We have to add an edge here. So it is quite simple. We just check where D is present in this array and at the end we can have two pointers at the front and at the end of the list and at the end we can add a new element. So it is also very space efficient. It is simple operation. So it takes order of one time. And adding a vertex takes order of one time. So let's say we have to add a new vertex F. So we just have to uh, resize this array and add a new element at the end. So it is also very space efficient or uh, time efficient. We just have to do a simple operation and it takes order of one time. So these are the advantages. When there are some advantages, there will also be some disadvantages uh, like we saw in the uh, agency matrix approach also. So let's find out what are, the, what are the disadvantages of this approach. So the first disadvantage is that if you have to find a relationship between two vertices, then that query is not very efficient. So we have seen that in adjacency matrix, if you have to find whether an edge exists from a particular vertex to another, then we can just simply check that particular entry in the 2D array and we can find out whether it is present or not. If it is one or the weight of the edge, then an edge is present. If it is zero, then an edge is not present. So there is no relation, but that is not possible uh, here. So it, it, will, it is not very efficient in case of adjacency list. Let's say we have to find whether an edge exists from B to C. So we have to find whether this edge exists. So what we'll have to do is we have to check for all the neighbors of B because for adjacency list for B will have all the neighbors. And so maybe the case can be that B is adjacent to all the nodes in the graph. So we'll have to search for all the nodes and we have to check whether an edge exists or not. So the time complexity can be equal to number of the vertices of the graph. So that can be order of V. And in case of adjacent matrix, it was order of one. So this is a disadvantage here that if you have to find some relationship, then that is not very efficient. Second is time taken to remove an edge takes order of E time. So let's say we have to remove an edge from A to E. So what we'll have to do is we have to check uh, how many edges are present for A. So we have to parse all the edges because these edges these edges are not ordered. So we have to query, we have to go one by one and check whether this is the same edge that we want to remove. So since these are not ordered, so we can have a hash map that will then directly take us whether an edge is present or not. But in general case, we have to parse one by one and that will take order of V time. And the third disadvantage is that if we have to remove a vertex, um, that is also not very time efficient. Let's say we have to remove a vertex T, we have to remove this. So we'll have to do a few steps. So first we'll have to check whether in this array, where the location of D is. So we, when we find this, then we have to remove this entry because now vertex D is not there. Then the second step will be, we have to check all these edges and find out wherever D is present, then we have to remove it. So here we have to remove this also. So this is a two step process. So first we'll have to check all the vertices, then we have to remove from all the edges. So it takes order of V plus E time. So basically these are the disadvantages of using adjacency list representation.
So now let's have a look at how we can represent a graph using adjacency list and write a code in C++. So I'm using uh, C++ as the language and all the code that I'll be using will be uploaded on my JIT repository and the link will be present in the description. So I've taken the same example that I've explained just that instead of ABC, I have replaced them with number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so that we can easily represent them uh, in code. So let's have a look at the code. So the code is quite basic. So what we have created is an array of vectors. So where each vector represents agency list of a vertex. So if this is the array of the vectors and size is V. So I've initialized V as five. Then I've added these edges. So for all the elements in for all the edges in the graph, zero to one, zero to four, you can see that zero to one edge is present, zero to four edge is present. I have uh, add an edge. So in the add edge function, I'm just passing this array of vectors and the source at the end vertex. And I'm just adding uh, in that vector, I'm just pushing back at the end. So this is the basic code. And at the end, I'm just printing it. So if you see what is the output, so basically you will get the same adjacency list that I've shown uh, in the video. Zero is pointing to one and four, one is pointing to one, two, three, four. Now let's have a look at if this is a weighted graph. So this is a weighted graph and we have these nodes, one, two, three, weight is given. And if you have to write code for this directed weighted graph, so what will the changes that we have to do? The changes will be quite minor. So what we'll do is instead of just storing the int in this vector, we'll just we'll store the pair. So first one will be the destination vertex and the second one will be the weight. So zero to one source starting starting vertex and then the end vertex and this will be the weight. So in this function, I have just passed all the variables and I've created a pair where I'm storing the end vertex and the weight. And at the end, I'm just printing the starting vertex, end vertex and the weight. So let's see what will be the output. So the output will be similar, but just the weight will be printed along with each of the nodes. So I hope it is clear. So this was all about adjacency list representation. In the next video, I will be discussing about incidence uh, matrix. If you like my content, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. So until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.